Hi, I'm Allie. Join me as I show you how to make Chris Lewis King's continuous circle earrings. They feature a disc duo in the center with a halo on the exterior and some fun, unique ways to capture in that halo. If you want any supplies, go ahead and look below the video in the description. We'll put links right there to get back to the website to have them all listed out for you. Gather everything up and let's get started. So to begin with this design, we're using some cubes, and these are the 1.8 millimeter Miyuki cubes. You can certainly use two 11s as well. We have the two hole halo bead, some disc duo beads, and some 11 OC beads as well. Now we are going to be doing some brick stitch. And I like this design by Chris Lewis King because you can see the brick stitch here, but you don't see the threads going over and hopping over the halo bead. So that's what's really cool that I'm gonna to show to begin. I have size eight dragon thread here and I'm working with the gray color. You can do whatever size. I have the gray because you can see it. And we are gonna begin with our stitch right here. And we're gonna do a ladder stitch to go in and create brick stitch. So I want you to take your piece right here and I'm leaving just about an inch at the end. I'm gonna put on a second bead and I'm gonna sew back through the first bead that I added. From here, this sits right next to one another. I go back through the bead that I just added, and then we're gonna continue on till we have 17 beads. Now, if you have a different size of bead, you may want a different number of beads, so we'll go over that. But you're going to add a bead, so into the opposite side of the bead that your thread is currently coming out of. So my thread's coming out the bottom here, I'm gonna sew into the top of it, adding that bead on letting it sit down right next to itself and the other one. And then I'm gonna sew back up through that bead that I just added. That's three, and again, approximately 17 to go around your halo bead. The thread was coming out the top of that little cube. I added a bead and went into the bottom of that. Then go back through the one that you just added. So again, here's four on and I want a total of 17 beads to wrap around the exterior of my halo bead. So after 17, you wanna make sure that it fits around your form, which our form is gonna be our halo bead, and then we're sticking the disc door in the interior. So you can see as I close this, it'll close up around the form and the ends pretty much almost touch. So what I'm gonna do now is connect these two ends together. I'm coming out of the bottom there of the last bead, bead number 17, and I'm gonna go into the top of the bead on the opposite side. As you pull into a circle, you'll see you're actually kind of coming out the top of that last bead because we're gonna join those together into that circle. Go back up through the first bead that your thread was originally coming out of, and that pulls those two together. You can see your form. Now double check, because if you're using seed beads, you wanna make sure that you can plop a halo in there and that it'll fit exactly. And that's what we're gonna do first, is we are going to plop the halo in. So you're gonna come back down through one of the beads in your form, doesn't really matter which one, go to the right, go to the left. And the first thing we're gonna do is coming out towards the center, we're gonna grab our halo bead. At the same time we grab the halo bead, we are going to grab our disc duo inside. So we wanna get the holes lined up so you can sew straight across from a disc duo through the halo to the opposite side. We're gonna let that lay down in here. We're actually going to catch our disc duo in the middle here. You're gonna look and see where is there a cube that's coming out near it. So through one of your cubes on the opposite side, then we are going to sew down the next cube next to it. And we are gonna sew through the other side of our halo bead and out through one of the cubes on the exterior side. So at this point here, you have your cubes that are now held around the halo bead. So see how that allows you to go in and to have that brick stitch look, which is actually the ladder stitch. And we're gonna go in and create more to it by adding some brick stitch with pearls and 11 O's on the exterior. Next, coming out around our cubes, we are going to do some actual brick stitch. And this is gonna add the pearls and some seed beads. 
And when we do this, I want you to think about the fact that you've got 15 pearls that will fit around the outer edge to 17 beads. So if it starts seeming to get tight, you are gonna go in and we are going to skip one of these beads. So the first thing we're gonna do is pick up a pearl here. And these are our three millimeter pearls. And I'm gonna pick up two pearls. Between the two pearls, I'm picking up two 11 OC beads. And I picked a darker color actually to add to the outer edge as well. So I have two of these blush silver lined and then another one of my pearls. So two pearls, two seed beads, and then we are coming out of our cube right here. We're gonna skip over two bridge threads, the thre threads that connect from one cube to the other. So here's the first one. We're gonna go and sew underneath the second one. So we're sewing underneath that bridge thread. When you sew underneath the bridge thread, you're taking your needle and thread underneath the threads there, thread or threads, sometimes there's gonna be two, sometimes there's gonna be one. And then we're going to take our needle and thread back up through the second pearl, going toward the seed beads and do a little tight pull. Now, as we go around, I want you to add one and two more 11 O's and then onto the pearl. Next bridge thread, you're gonna sew your needle and thread underneath that bridge thread right there. So two seed beads, one pearl under the next bridge thread and then back up through the pearl. Once you're back up through the pearl then, you're gonna continue around. Now, remember what I said, that we're gonna get to a point where you don't have enough space to fit a pearl every single one. So after two 11s and one pearl, every four or so, you're gonna skip over the next bridge thread. I'm gonna go through this one, I'm gonna skip the next one and so on to the following bridge thread. So keep in mind, 15 have to go on between 17 bridge threads. And there you have it. So go ahead around and keep adding in those two C beads with the pearls on the outer edge. When you're coming out your last pearl here, what we're gonna do to close it up is put on two of our 11 O C beads, and then we're gonna sew down through pearl number one. When we sew down through pearl number one, that puts those two C beads on so it matches the whole exterior row. Now, if you don't want a pointed look, what you can do is, after going and sewing underneath the bridge thread between pearl number one and then going back up through that pearl, you come out along the top and you can just sew a seed bead to connect all of those 11 O seed beads. Instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew between those beads, add another 11 O seed bead and sew down through bead number two. What that is gonna do when you separate out those two blush, silver lined blush beads, is pop that one kind of right into the middle into that triangle. From here, I'm gonna go down through the pearl and it's up to you whatever you find is easiest. You can go down through the pearl, out through the cube, or you go down through the pearl, catch onto the bridge thread, back up through the pearl, See how I kind of turn it to the side there. One more time back through that second pearl. When you come out that second pearl, it makes this earring nice and stiff. I would recommend doing this. Go again out through bead number one of those two 11s. Add a third bead on top there. Go down through bead number two, and that creates your point. Down through the next pearl, catching underneath and going under that bridge thread. If you forget to go under the bridge thread, the last 11 OC bead will pop off and you know you didn't get caught onto it. Back up through the pearl. Separate out those 11 OC beads by sewing through bead number one. Add a darker 11 O or the same color if you want. And then again, back down through the next 11 OC bead and down through the next pearl to create that nice pointed edge. I'm gonna go a whole way along the outer edge 
getting in that darker bead right along the exterior, just like Chris did with her silvers, adding another one in. Once you're at the end and you have one more, it looks like one more of your point to add, what I want you to do instead is to grab a wire guard, go up through the wire guard coming out of your first silver line blush beads, go down through the second hole of your wire guard, and this is how we're gonna attach our ear wire, or you can do it as a pendant too. And then you're gonna go down through your second bead, down through the pearl right below it. And pull that nice and tightly through. When you're working with wire guards, you wanna make sure as you pull that that thread stays right inside of that little U channel. From here, go back through the pearl, do one more loop around. So you're going back through the pearl next to it, up through the 11-0, one more loop around, and then you're gonna bring it down towards the center, like so, going through a cube that's close by without getting your starter thread caught, getting those two threads close to one another. And the fun thing with the magic wine of the disc duos is it kinda has two sides. So it has a darker side, and it has a brighter red side. So whichever side you want, the front or the back, you're gonna take those two thread ends, which are now next to one another, or you can weave your thread through so they get that way, and tie them together close next to that halo bead. Once it's there, cut or burn off the edges, and your first earring is finished. You just need to open up your ear wire, place it on, close it up, and then you have it. One suggestion I would make is actually to grab a pair of the Huggy earrings, which I actually have in right now, because they can open. You open up your ear wire a little bit bigger here, and then you can change the side if you make them two sides, front facing, back facing on the Huggy earrings that you can slide them on and off if you do wanna have it flip from one side to the other. An alternative to this that I wanted to show is kind of a little a little cheat, but it does save time. So what you're gonna do is coming out of your second seed bead after putting on your 11-0, you're gonna put on two more seed beads, then your pearl, then you're gonna tuck underneath the next bridge thread next to it. Then you're gonna go through the pearl before it. So we tuck under the bridge thread, we make sure that it goes underneath there. We tuck into the pearl before it, we go through the first 11, we add our darker 11, and we go through the second 11. And see how it doesn't quite make it as tight and the peaks as nice, but it is a faster stitch. So you're doing two 11s, then you add your pearl, go underneath the next bridge thread or threads, hop on over to the previous pearl, go back up through that previous pearl, Go through bead number one of the 11s, add bead number two, which is your red bead, and then come out through the 11 OC bead. It connects tighter around the outer edge, um, and it does have kind of thread going from one to the other, but it's still getting you that peak without having to do the brick stitch a second time around. So either way is right, but I would do one way for both earrings. Once you get your second one made, you're just gonna put on your ear wire to finish up your continuous round earrings. There are so many different ways that you can do these, so many different ways to do the outer edges and continue on with the design if you wanna keep building and building and building. It really is kind of one of those, the sky's the limit. I also would love to see another one hanging out at the bottom here and connected too. So that's your challenge to post in our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. Thanks so much for watching me create these beautiful continuous circle earrings. There really are so many modifications that you can make to them. So again, that challenge to go ahead and post in our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. As well as if you haven't yet, hit that little subscribe button so you don't miss anything from us here at Potomac Beads. If you need the materials, remember look below the video in the description to get a link back to our site. Thanks so much for watching Potomac Beaters and stay tuned for our next inspirational design and a big shout out and thank you to Chris for another beautiful design to create.